there. How you doing? In case you're new here, my name is Kat. This is Katie Reads Books. Today I'm here to do a book tag. But before I do that, if you have not voted in the Shaded Choice Awards, then you need to go away from this video, type in the shadedchoiceawards.com, and go vote for your favorite BIPOC author. This is the second week of the Shaded Choice Awards. I have needed to get this video out for an infuriatingly long time, and I'm finally managing to do it, but you, you've got like two more weeks to go and vote there on their second round of voting. So, you know, chop chop, go do that, go, shoot. This is a book award that was put together by Princess and Jasmine here on booktube and ashley who is over on bookstagram so go over there and vote after you've done that go check out princesses and jasmine's announcement video about this they're gonna they'll fill you in on the reasons why it's there um there's some tea spilled about goodreads so you're gonna want to know and then after you've done that go follow ashley on instagram and then you can come back here and watch me do the Shaded Choice Awards tag. Okay, now that you're back, I want to thank Princess for tagging me in the Shaded Choices Awards tag. The Shaded Choices Award tag questions are on the website as well, so if you come across this video and you want to give it a go and I didn't tag you, so what? Go to the website and do the tag anyway. Question number one. A new black POC author that you read this year. So a new black or POC author that I read this year is Mallory Blackman. I had never heard of this author before. Um, she was not a debut BIPOC author that I read in 2020, but she is an author that I discovered in 2020. Ledette M. picked this as a buddy read, um, and, <laughs> and I love Mallory Blackman's work, and I'm really glad that um, Hannah introduced me to this book, but man... It hurts so bad. Okay, so Knots and Crosses is a book that takes the current systemic racism and turns it around so that the white community is the community that is being um, oppressed and brutalized and uh, all the things that the black community goes through. You follow Sefi and Callum. Sefi is a black girl who is growing up in a richer household with um, better opportunities for education, and she is good friends with Callum, who is a white boy from the other side of the fence and um, lives a poorer life and does not have the same opportunities for education until the school agrees to take Callum as a student. And I can't remember if, yeah, Callum is a knot and then Sefi is a cross. <laughs> the crosses is either going to let some knot students come into the crosses schools. So it's, you know, everything's been segregated up until this point. Um, and Callum starts to attend the same school as Sefi, and they start to have to navigate a lot of social pressures, and then you follow their story for years and through, um, rebellion, um, <clears throat> and through the rebellion of the knots um, against their oppressors. So for me as a reader, this book forced me to come up against a lot of the stereotypes that exist within um, how systemic ra racism is so ingrained within everyone. Um, and then, of course, it's, can you see it? A thriller. It lives up to it. It was so good. So good. <laughs> But it was so hard, and that's all I'm going to say.
about knots and crosses. Okay, I feel like that was a really long-winded fucking answer to question number one, but this is an important book. I will, I will go so far as to say that this is, like, of course it's important, right? But if you are trying to understand what systemic racism is and how it exists and the way that it persists and why things are so raw right now in modern day society, you need to read Knots and Crosses. Two, a debut book that you've read. A Song of Wraith and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I, I've said this in several other videos, but I will say it every time I pick up this book until the day that I die. This book is gorgeous, and the story is amazing. I nominated this one in the Shade of Choice Awards um, for, like, best debut, because it was so, so good. And then I have to ship off this the spine of the book, too. Just, just so good. So, so pretty. It's just so pretty. A Song of Race and Ruin follows two characters, one named Karina and the other is named Malik. And Karina is the daughter of the Kestrel, or the Queen of the Kingdom. And Karina is Crown Princess. There's been some tragedy within her family, and she finds out that she can cast a spell that will resurrect um, a member of her family. And in order to do that, she has to have the King's heart. So... She has to have the king's heart. Malik is from a different part of the kingdom and has fled his home to come to Zeran so that he can try to um, make enough money to get to send back to his, his family. He and his sisters are considered second-class citizens within the city of Ziran, and Malik manages to sort of wind his way into a competition for the champion of Solstagia. The champion of Solstagia will marry the princess, and so Karina decides that whoever she marries is going to be the person that she kills, because then she will have the heart of a king and she can resurrect one of her family members. So, I think, like, from the start, you can see that things are only going to go in one particular way. But then Roseanne A. Brown throws in so many different, like, beautiful storytelling aspects of this story. And relates it back to how the magic works. And then... and then surprises you with how things work out. Book two, I think, is for, in, in like, due to come out in June 2021, or was it just 2021? I saw it on Twitter. I saw the cover for book two, and my most anticipated release for next year, like, for sure. I am so excited for book two of this. Anyway, all that, again, <laughs> I feel like, this was a very long answer to question number two, but Roseanne A. Brown is a debut author that I read this year and loved. Question number three is a 2020 release you haven't read yet, and uh, it has to be by a BIPOC author. So let me see. 2020 release that I haven't read yet is All Boys Are Blue by George M. Johnson. I picked this up, um... I think, I think I heard about this one on Bow Ties and Books. It's all over BookTube, though, so it's, it's hard to tell where I heard about it from. This is a YA, uh, memoir, um, of George M. Johnson's life as a black, queer American, um, growing up. This is a book that I would really, really, really like to read before the end of 2020, 
that is encroaching very quickly. This is also a book that, in the synopsis, it says that it shows both, both um, joyous moments and then also like really heart wrenching moments um, about his life as well. So I'm anticipating it being a five star read. It's just a matter of getting to it. It's not that long either. I don't think. Probably 300-ish pages. Oh, there's a picture. There's a friendly picture in the back. Oh my goodness. I love that. Okay. <clears throat> 297. Sub 300 pages. But yes, 2020 release that I haven't read yet. And it's a shame. Number four. A favorite author that released a new book this year. I keep raving about her, but Talia Hibbert. Talia Hibbert has released, um, <clears throat> Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and she has also released a Christmas novella called Wrapped Up in You, which you should definitely go check out as well. Number five, what's your favorite genre, and what, what book would you vote to win in that genre? My favorite genre is fantasy. And if I was going to vote for a book to win in that group, vote, yeah, in that genre, the thing is, I am unfortunately haven't read an, enough fantasy by BIPOC authors and the ones that I have read um, were not released in 2020. Does it have to be in 2020? Yeah, because it has to be like, you know, vote to win on the thing. I thought that the Poppy War was a really powerful book and there was a lot of interesting, um, they get to see magic world building in that book it wasn't a 2020 release so it doesn't like I can't vote for it but that would be either that or um <sighs> a song of race and ruin which I think I may have voted for that one um in the fantasy category as well or maybe it was in young adult fantasy I don't really remember maybe you can tell me in the comments below and if you can't then Either it's been knocked out or you didn't go vote. And if you haven't gone to vote, then you need to go and do that right now. Go. Number six. What is your favorite book release from 2020 by a black POC author? What is my favorite book release from 2020 by a black or POC author? So this is a book that I finished just recently, um, but The Order of the Pure Moon Reflected in the Water by Zen Cho is a book that was, in fact, published in 2020. Zen Cho is currently living in the UK, but she is a Malaysian author, and this book was just... I said this in, I think, my weekly vlog, but the way that the story was put together and the way that it was told, just the general construction and and how events were um placed such that it it was fast paced but also you got a lot of world building at the same time and like it was just a, an, an astonishing amount of world and character work and plot work to see in a 158 page book um, that just, like, it, it, so, it was so impressive. So far, so far, I don't know if I, do I have any more BIPOC books? Well, I mean, yeah, I just said all boys are blue, but any more BIPOC books that were released in 2020 that I haven't read yet? I don't know. So I don't know, like, how much competition this is going to be able to get over the rest of the year, but this book was, was fantastic. It was so good. Question number seven. Who's a black POC author or book that deserves more 
recognition. So this year, I think it was this year, I read Song of the Crimson Flower by Julie C. Deo. Um, the, it's, it was a, it was a good book. It was YA. It was released in 2019, but Amazon let me know, I don't know, like a month and a half or so ago that she had a new release coming out. I considered getting it. I think I've decided against buying it myself and I'm just going to borrow it from the library or something because I would like to read more by her, but I've noticed that I am more likely to unhaul YA books, so I've tried to stop spending money on them. But she does a very good job with her storytelling. Her worlds are very beautiful. Her characters are wonderfully flawed. And she is a Vietnamese author, so it's yet another perspective on the Asian diaspora. Question number eight. Yes. What's a book you'd recommend that you don't directly identify with that's still POC? Well, I guess I probably should have used <laughs> Song of the Crimson Flower for that one, huh? Um, okay. So it doesn't ask for 2020, right? So it's just a book that I would recommend. A book that I would recommend but I didn't necessarily identify with would be Tristan Strong po Punches a Hole in the Sky by Kwambe Mbalia. It's presented by, it's like a Rick Riordan Presents book, but I don't really know what his role in any of it was. But the story itself was very fascinating and it's a book that I would recommend to someone who had um, young readers or specifically young boy readers because the, it is a, a young male protagonist. Um, a lot of the struggles that he comes up against are related to some traumatic events that he went through. He really wants to be the hero, but he feels like he doesn't have the strength to do it. And he goes into a place of stories that are all based within folk tales um, that stem from African American culture in one way or another. Number nine, black POC content creators recommendations. Okay, so 10 over a 10 minute book review is someone that I think everybody needs to go and check out. She goes into very, she, she does very in-depth reviews on books with VIP with black representation and gives a lot of honest straightforward opinions on the books that she reads. I also really love following Ashley over at the Bookish Realm. They're, all of her videos are very com conversational and whenever I go to watch one of Ashley's videos it, it just kind of feels like sitting down with someone and having a cup of coffee and going back and forth about books that you've, you know, loved recently. I also really love it whenever I see Olivia Catastrophe has uploaded a new video because she reads a, on a, she reads a much different selection of books than I do. And I think that's something I can say about all of the content creators that I just mentioned is they read, and not just that, they recommend books with, you know, black representation. It's also that they are reading in completely different bubbles than I am. I tend to stay kind of fixated in my little fantasy bubble. Um, and sometimes I'll venture out into like maybe a little bit of YA contemporary and maybe a little bit of nonfiction. But whenever I go to their three channels, I always come away with a very diverse list of books, both in genre and representation, that I am excited to get on my wish list and, 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 and read. Kind of going off kilter here, because if you've made it to this point in the video, hi, thank you very much. Also, two other black content creators that I think you need to check out would be Nyota Parker, who is a black non-binary rapper, and her music is fucking awesome. And the second one that I would recommend is her channel is called Immaculate Bites. She's on YouTube, she's on Instagram, and she's 
got a huge following, but what I really love about her channel is that she gives quick video cooking tutorial, quick video cooking, quick video recipes for southern comfort food, for basics done better, and features a lot of dishes from multiple parts of Africa. Again, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Now it's time for me to tag people. I'm going to tag Hannah from Ledet M. I am going to tag Faye from Books and Chocoholic. And I'm going to tag Casey from Casey is Cloaked. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content from me, please hit subscribe. I produce bookish content one or two times a week and host live read-ins and write-ins on alternating Saturdays. All of my social media and other shenanigans are down in the description box below. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you in the very next video. Bye.